Do you need me to change it? There we go. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'll tell you right now that I really do not have easy access to the chat feature right now. So if anyone has questions or they want to interrupt, just feel free to just um, speak over me. <laughs> All right. So I learned about perusal from Katie Herzig back in August, about a week before classes started. And I was like, oh, I'm going to jump right in and try to use it. So I'm not the expert. I'm just going to tell you about some cool things that I learned about it and my use for the fall of 2019. Um, so here's an outline of the presentation. I'm just going to really quickly give you the what, the why of perusal, and then the majority of the time is going to be telling you a little bit about the nuts and bolts. So what is perusal? So it describes itself as a social e-reader platform, which is not helpful at all. Um, when you think of perusal, it, it's kind of like a book club meets social media. So imagine when you're reading something, and this is a screenshot of what perusal looks like. Um, whoops. Uh, right in the middle of the screen, you can see the content, the reading material, and you can zoom in or out as much as you want, but you can add highlights. And as soon as you highlight something, you get this new window that pops up to the right, and you can share your thoughts. People can upvote questions. They can upvote your comments. They can respond to your comments. And if you look at the original reading material, anytime you see something highlighted, someone made a comment. And if you just click on it, you can become part of the conversation. So it's actually a really cool thing. So why use perusal? Why do this at all? Um, you can just assign readings and people may or may not do them. There are lots of good reasons to choose perusal. First of all, it's free. It's free to instructors. It's free to students. It's free to organizations. Nobody really is paying for this. Somehow they're making a profit. I think it's because they have an online bookstore so you can buy reading material through perusal, but you certainly don't have to do that to use it. Um, when I think of free, I often think of bad quality, think of Moodle and what a nightmare Moodle is most of the time. Um, perusal isn't like that. It's It was created by faculty at Harvard. They take great pride in it. They have great customer service. Uh, I only had one glitch the entire semester and I wrote to them and they got back to me with the same day with the solution. Um, and they're constantly making changes to it. Back in August, there wasn't a feature for um, making comments in video. And now they have that new feature where you can actually insert a comment into the timeline, which is pretty cool. Um, it's pretty easy to use. I find it very intuitive. And I front loaded everything at the beginning of the semester in August, and I could pretty much set it and forget it. And perusal, grades assignments for you and it grades based on quality of comments and I'll tell you more about that later on. Uh, the students actually like it. The students use it. They interact with one another. I asked my students at the end of the fall semester what they thought about perusal. They really liked it. Some of them said that they did more reading than they had done in years uh, because they were using perusal. The number one reason to use it though is that there's research showing that perusal actually gives academic benefits to the students. So if you go to their website, and I've got a link down here at the bottom, perusal.com forward slash research, you can find published journal articles about the research that they found. And so just from the top article on that page shows that when students use perusal, they complete more reading assignments before class, they read for longer periods of time, and they actually perform better on exams compared to other classes that did not use perusal. And there's other research too about like how much they like using perusal and how great perusal is. So if you want to know how great perusal is, just ask perusal. Okay, how? How does this work? How do I use it? Right now, I invite all of you to go to perusal.com and set up a new user account. It's totally free. Um, just click on the login. I'm going to give you just a minute to do that. If you don't want to, that's fine. I'm just still going to walk you through what it looks like. When you're registering, when you get to this page, um, stop and come back to me and then I'll give you some more um, instruction. So give me like a thumbs up or something when you're, uh, when you're with me. Thank <laughs> you. 
And somebody is somebody asking back to the um, the page with the link. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's perusal with an extra L at the end, just perusal.com. And I can actually put some things into the chat too, if that helps me just a second. Um, Oh my gosh, how do I get to the chat screen? Well, there's no way I'm getting to the chat from here, so I'll just let you guys work it out. Perusal.com. Um, Angela, hmm? Angela, it's it's asking if we want to log in with Facebook or Google or Twitter. Do you recommend that or do you not recommend that? I am very much against Facebook as a general rule. I just did it with my email account, but it's completely up to you. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up here. Thumbs ups, thumb ups, whatever. Um, when you get to this page, you wanna select create or enroll in a course. After you do that, it should pop up with a choice of being a student or an instructor. I want you to choose student. And it's gonna ask you for a course code. This is the course code that I use for my um, fall semester class. And here I'm making it a little bit bigger so you can get it. It's my last name, Kilb, K-I-L-B dash, 6QFJW. All right, so I'm seeing some thumbs up. And actually, if somebody else could type that into the chat so that people have access to it, that would be great. I can't get to my chat screen right now. Angela, um, can you Angela, can you slow down a little bit? Um, yeah, I, I, I was doing the other thing. So I missed why we should register as students. Because I'm going to show it to you from the student perspective. So you're going to register for my course as a student, but you can still create a new uh, um, course on your own later on. So I'm going to give so you are we, the are we creating an account right now or, or not yeah. so, in order to be able to participate in your course? Yes, so okay. create create an account. And then mm -hmm. as you're creating your account, it's gonna take you to this screen. So choose create or enroll in a course. Okay. Then I am a student and then the course code. And okay. you can go so, back later and make yourself an instructor. It should not be a problem. Okay, so can you just give me another minute to catch up? Sure. For those of you who are already at this stage, you can click on complete setup and it'll um, walk you through a pretty short tutorial. So if you wanna go through and just do the tour tutorial on your own and jump right in, that's perfectly fine. Okay, is everybody um, finished with the setup? I'm on the screen that says get started, getting started. Is that the right screen? Um, or should I go farther? Does it look like this? Welcome to the, uh, hang on. Mm. Becky, is it library did you already or enter the, did you enter the course code? Yes, I did. Okay. So I, I see your course here, but I'm not, my screen doesn't look like yours. It just says get started about, okay. about all about perusal. So let me show you what mine looked like when I did this a few days ago. 
Um, after you do the com the complete setup, but when you click on that button, it gives you the tutorial that looks something like this. It tells you about the comments, uh, yellow highlights and blue highlights. The blue ones are for the instructor, the yellow are for the other students. Um, and then the tour walks you through some of the things like how to make highlights. Um, you can highlight text or you can highlight a square or a rectangle anywhere in perusal to um, to highlight a figure or sometimes if you have trouble highlighting text uh, you can use this um, figure annotation tool to highlight what you need and then over on the right it walks you through some other things so you can look at all conversations by clicking on this button you can star your comments um, do search there's a bunch of stuff that i don't use um, oh, my chat came back. Let me see. And I'll just say, Angela, um, when I got in, this is Martha, when I got in, I didn't see that tutorial until I went into a document in the library. Um, oh, okay. Thank you for that. Okay. So are you all able to get to the tutorial now? Is there a particular document you'd like us to go into collectively or does it matter? I think if you all go into the first document, you can maybe interact with each other a little bit, but there are already comments in all the documents from um, my students in the fall, so it really doesn't matter too much. I just wanted you all to sort of get the experience of what, what it looks like, to see the comments, to upvote, and if you want to go in and try to make some comments, that would be good because you can also see how perusal is scoring your comments. So I'll talk more about this later on, but for a given comment, perusal will give it a score of zero, one, or two based on quality. So you can try making some shorter comments or some longer comments or actually read part of the passage and like apply what you're reading and see how that makes a difference. Um, but since we're kind of having some difficulty literally staying on the page, we can go back to my slides. And if you didn't get into perusal or it's not working, or if you're not able to make comments, then we can troubleshoot that a little bit later. Um, so let's, we can come back to my screen if you want, looking at the student's perspective. So once you're in perusal, it should look something like this. Um, you have the you might have the assignments in the middle and then on the right there's a big green button that says work on assignment so um everything is set up with deadlines that i put in as the instructor and perusal will email students with reminders it'll email students if somebody responded to their question or if they um if somebody responded to a comment that they made <clears throat> So this is a screen that I showed you before where you have the reading material portions are highlighted and um, you can read what people have written to the right. And I'm seeing some um, co comments in the chat. I wonder if this is a good alternative to Hypothesis, Moodle's annotation plugin. Um, I don't really know how Hypothesis works, but I think Moodle is the worst. The good thing about Perusal is that it plays really well with Canvas. It's very well integrated with Canvas and Perusal. It scores these comments and then it will upload them directly into Canvas, which was which, which is really helpful. Um, okay. Um, does perusal record when students enter the system, even if they don't make a comment? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think perusal just records if somebody logs in, but it does record their reading time once they click on an assignment. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So let me tell you a little bit about the instructor's perspective. So here's what it looks like when you log in as an instructor. It's a little bit different. You don't have that little green button that says work on assignment. Instead, you can open the assignment. You can um, edit the assignment. And if I go to my screen, I can't I exit out of this. So 
this is my my live screen from one of the courses that I set up. If I scroll down, you can see it also has options for, options for analytics, confusion report. The confusion report gives you data if a bunch of students had the same question or if they had questions around the same material so that you can um, use that to focus your class. Um, it, you can download all comments and then you can look at progress. I mean, it, it's just a bunch of different uh, kinds of data that you can get from Perusal. Okay, let me go back to this. Okay, so Perusal uses artificial intelligence to score the quality of students' comments, which takes a little bit of getting used to. It's interesting, I don't know exactly how it works, but it seems to work pretty well. Um, it also seamlessly connects to Canvas, which I already mentioned, which could be like a really big advantage in switching from Moodle to Canvas. To Canvas. Uh, there are defaults with the grading, but you can tinker around with it, and I certainly did in the fall semester because I wanted to make it a little bit simpler. The default is that students are expected to make seven annotations throughout the reading, and each annotation is given a score ranging from zero to two. So two demonstrates thorough and thoughtful reading and insightful interpretation of the reading. And this is the feedback that students get when they're able to look at their grades. One demonstrates reading, but no or only superficial interpretation of the reading. And zero does not demonstrate any thoughtful reading or interpretation. So in practice, here's what it looks like. I'm gonna give you some examples of comments that earn the different ratings. So a zero rating looks like this, exactly what I was thinking. It's a very surface level. Here's a version where it's longer, but still considered surface level from perusal. I agree, I would say articles that have items that seem randomly linked together and draw your attention can have you wondering whether they are true or not, because we wouldn't know if they were from our general knowledge. So this is considered um, a surface level response according to the artificial in intelligence from perusal. Uh, let's look at um, comments that earn one point. Um, I agree pre-registration is the next step that researchers must be willing to take. Uh, this is a hard question because there really is not enough information about them, but I think that's how they want us to look at it instead of trying to look for some background information. Here are examples of two pointers. I agree some studies just sound like they couldn't be true. There may be an exception every once in a while, but it shouldn't be that hard to guess what wouldn't replicate. And um, obviously they are currently uh, currently rushed, but you cannot cut something down that would normally take months to 48 hours unless you have found an alternative method that works just the same. And it does not sound like they have tested peer reviews done in 48 hours very often. Uh, so you can take it or leave it, the artificial intelligence, how exactly you wanna use it. You can also change perusal so that it creates an all or none score, like if they have any comments or a certain number of comments, it's really flexible so that you can change the grading how you want. Uh, the defaults for perusal are actually really, really complicated. So I gave you a start with perusal expects about seven annotations and it scores them on quality from a zero to two, but it also scores according to other things. So how much of the content they read, which makes sense, whether comments are evenly distributed throughout the reading. So if all the comments are clustered together, like at the beginning, let's say, uh, points are deducted. deducted whether the assignment is open more than once. So if they open the assignment more frequently, they can get more points for that. Um, the scoring is also based on active engagement, which is a little unclear. Um, I tried with some other colleagues um, figuring out what this means, how it classifies active engagement, and it, it's pretty unclear. Um, getting responses from others uh, after you make a comment upvoting other comments and receiving upvotes. Uh, I wanted something much simpler when I used it in the fall because I wanted to be able to explain the grading scheme easily to students. So what I did is I told students that 
the grading is just based on two things. They got 40% of the points just for reading the entire assignment and Perusal does a good job of gauging how much they actually read based on like the time spent on each page. And then I also had Perusal use the AI to give quality ratings for the top seven annotations. It, it worked pretty well. I was just looking again at the scores and 12 out of 16 students, which is 75%, they were able to earn a perfect score of five out of five on at least one reading assignment. When I was teaching the course, I gave myself a student account so that I could secretly and anonymously go in and um, make some comments and see how many points I could earn. It's actually really easy to earn a score of three with the setup, but it's actually kind of difficult to earn a score of five. Um, Perusa really expects some in-depth discussion. Um, other things, there's a hey, target. Ange. Yeah. So I'm confused. I thought that they scored each of them on a zero to two scale, but then they convert it to a zero to five score for the for each assignment. Good question. So when you work out the, the grading rubric, rubric in perusal, you can have an overall score. Um, so I think it defaults to seven points you can earn. I changed it so that they can earn a maximum of five points. So 40% of the five points are just for completing the reading assignment and the remaining 60% of the five points is for the quality of the comments. So if somebody earned a three, or if somebody earned a two, two out of five points, that means they, they might've done all the reading, but they didn't make any comments. If they earned a three, they did all the reading and maybe they had one comment that wasn't a throwaway comment. But if they earned a perfect score of five, they had to do all the reading and make at least seven like substantive comments. Awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. This is Katie Hersey, by the way. <laughs> um, other things, uh, the, the target group size for like a reading group in perusal is about 15. So if you have a larger class size of 30 or even 80, you can have perusal divide up the class into different groups so that it, it doesn't get too muddy when people are making comments and responding to one another. Comments can be anonymous. When students are making comments, they have the option to make themselves anonymous. But what I chose to do is make all comments from students anonymous. And you can do this when you create a new assignment. And this was really helpful, especially when I went in as a student, because I didn't see who was making the other comments. So I didn't like rush to judge anybody. But as an instructor, when you go in and look at the instructor view, you can see who, who said what, um, and everything is recorded with people's names with the scoring. There's a lot of flexibility in perusal. There's flexibility in terms of how you do the grading, but there's also a lot of flexibility in terms of the content that you can post for students to read. So when I did this in the fall, I took a lot of blogs, peer-reviewed journal articles, websites, and I downloaded everything as PDFs and I uploaded PDFs into Perusal. But Perusal also has the opportunity to take like a picture of a website so that students are um, reading the website. Um, you can access an electronic copy of an entire textbook. Students can buy their textbooks through Perusal. You can post an ebook. Uh, you can post uh, videos and podcasts and students can make comments right in the timeline. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what, what you can post there. And let me see. So yeah, perusal is great. We should all use perusal. I know that I rushed through this and you have a lot of questions, but the good news is that perusal has great tutorials. It's got great instructions and good customer service. So if you just log in, um, and intuitively like look around, you'll figure it out pretty easily. So I know that you guys have questions. Um, if you want to, we can open that up now or uh, it's 1026, so I don't know what. Out of time, Angela, there's a few questions I can read you from the chat. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure, there's a little bit of confusion about this. Maybe you can clarify for everybody. Um, somebody asked about uploading documents that they haven't bought from Perusal, but you can upload any document. Is that correct to Perusal? Yeah. 
You can upload any document and you can also share documents from Dropbox pretty easily. So you, you absolutely do not have to pay anything in order to use Perusal. Um, and then somebody asked whether or not you have like maybe a sample assignment and is there a student guide that you point students to when they're doing this or do they just kind of figure it out on their own? Honestly, the students just figured it out on their own. Um, there, and when you sign in the first time, it's going to give you the little tutorial so that you know how to click on stuff. I would say that one sort of troubleshooting problem that we had is that when I would upload PDFs, sometimes the PDFs had embedded links in them. So if you go to click on the PDF, it would take you to the link instead of enable you to like uh -huh. highlight text and yeah. make a comment. So a workaround is that um, figure annotation tool. You can just highlight as a rectangle the area and include, make your comment that way. But okay. it, overall, it was really easy to use. Are there restrictions? Somebody asked was asking about types of documents. Um, so like Word documents, PDF, um, something from a website, what formats? Yeah, you can link to a website. Um, you can even use Excel documents. You can use Microsoft Word documents. There might be other documents too. And like they're improving this all the time. So if there's some kind of document that you wanna use that they don't have, I mean, you might write to the people who are developing it and see if they'll add it, but it seems to be really, really flexible. Um, and in terms of learning curve for us, does mm -hmm. do you feel like, do, do people wanna know, is this something, if somebody's just diving into this today, you feel like they could probably feel confident to use it by the beginning of spring? Yeah, absolutely. Like I only first heard about it a week before the semester started. And I, and I just, I jumped right in. It's super easy. I did some troubleshooting with colleagues, you know, like Katie Herzig and, and Katie Wilsiver were my like students, like trying to go in and make comments and things, but it's, it's really easy to use. I, you could just set it and forget it. Um, the grading is really easy. Like you can get the grade book just download it as a CSV file and upload it to Moodle. But if any of you are trying out Canvas in the spring, it's supposed to be seamless with Canvas. Like I think you can access perusal through the Canvas course page and then the grades just automatically show up. You don't really have to do anything. Yeah, I, I will just say as a quick aside to that, um, those sorts of integrations in Canva, Canvas, they're called LTI integrations. I, I don't know whether or not you may, you may know this, Angela, um, whether or not that perusal has been activated as an integration for Canvas for our installation. Um, if people, yeah, if you're teaching in Canvas this spring and you want to use perusal and you don't see it as an option, you would want to reach out to um, Academic Tech to IT and ask. Mm -hmm. I was in a meeting yesterday. They were talking a little bit about the timelines for getting those LTIs approved. They have to go through a security um, audit. I, there's no reason they wouldn't pass the security audit, but it is a little bit of a process. So mm -hmm. people just know. Um, mm -hmm. That's the way um, integrations in Canvas work. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's asking about the length of documents. Is there um, any limitation to how long of a document you can upload or numbers of documents? Like, is there a limitation to number of students, number of documents, anything like that people should be aware of? I haven't run into any limitations and I know that you can use entire textbooks and you can limit like what page of the textbooks you want the students to read for one assignment. So again, I think it's super flexible. And then one final question, because we're on almost out of time. Howard's asked a couple times, this is free. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. It is it's free. Associated with this. Um, and my and I'll just answer your other question, Howard. Does IT support this? IT does not support perusal, um, but they support Canvas and they support the integration of third-party apps into Canvas. So there are many applications that can be integrated with Canvas, but you do have to go through a process. And with that, it is 1029. I'm going to reclaim host privileges. Um, and I am going to ask Hannah or so. Oh, oh, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>